Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review. I'm Stu Harrison. We're here of course at Marion Pianos just outside of Toronto, Canada. We're in our beautiful Oakville showroom today. So we're going to be taking a look at the Kawhi GX2, an instrument that has had an enormous impact on the institutional piano industry and really the home piano industry as well. Uh, revolutionary things going on with the action, a really fantastic round tone. Uh, they grew it a little bit from the RX2 which of course was retired in around the 2013-2014 range. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us. It's going to be an exciting review uh, for me as well. I have spent hundreds of hours with this uh, instrument, really eager to share a lot of those thoughts with you today. So thanks for joining us. We're going to get started right away. So there are several important points that I want to get across today. The first one I'm going to start with is questions about where the GX line came from. In other words, how did it evolve? Because uh, there was a lot of uh, confusion when it first hit the market that uh, whether this was truly just an update to the RX line, uh, then there was sort of the RX line which was still being produced at the same time as the GX line. There were many questions about exactly how the RX and the GX were uh, different from one another. Of course, the RX has not been with us for uh, several years now, but we still get questions about how the GX is different than the GL line. Or really, uh, I got a comment uh, on one of the videos just the other day about uh, is the SK2 really that much different than the GX2? So these are all great questions. And of course, I'm gonna do my best to summarize uh, that information as best I can and deliver some succinct uh, thoughts on that subject. So. Is the GX2 different than the SK2 or is it different than the GL40? Absolutely. Now, where did it come from? Uh, based on discussions with a lot of Kauai engineers, uh, people within the company, as well as just our own observations here. Of course, we're always ripping these pianos apart to see what makes them tick. The GX2 is, I would call it a, a, a um, from a top-down evolution from the SK2. If you compare the SK2 and the GX2 in terms of their plate design, in terms of their measurements, in terms of how they've approached rim construction, how they've approached bridge construction, um, the action placement, they are very, very, very similar. In fact, you can actually take a GX2 action right out of the piano, slip it into an SK2, and besides some minor things like strike point and having to realign the hammers, the actions fit. So if that doesn't tell you that the two are closely linked or really cousins to one another, uh, that's, that's kind of proof positive that you're dealing with two instruments that really are descended from uh, the same DNA. Now, how's the GX different? Well, obviously the SK2 is built by um, a very small team of people uh, within the Kauai factory. It's a separate section of that Kauai factory where all of their MPAs work, entirely handmade instrument, uh, really a, a very special, very um, uh, unique handcrafted um, instrument. Uh, that they just make a few hundred of the year. The GX is rolling off the line in the other part of the factory where of course they produce GL, GX, uh, some of the Boston Grands. Um, so we've got a similar rim design, we've got a similar action design. Uh, so the differences really between the two uh, are in the type of wood they're using for the soundboard, the hammers, and of course uh, the care and attention that's going into the assembly. But the raw goods are very much similar to what you're going to find in the SK2. Now, what do you get with the GX2? Like, what, what describes this musical experience, or who really is this for? Well, when we come to that, uh, you know if you've watched other videos of mine that I love talking about the action, focusing on the tone, uh, and maybe just giving some pointers on who I think the perfect customer is. So that's what we're going to do right now. But before I do any of that, I'm just going to play a couple of notes to get this sound in your ear. Today we're going to be capturing the sound with an AKG C414 microphone. Those of you who know studio gear will recognize that as a very uh, standard high quality microphone, which is pretty flat. It doesn't really bias the sound, and we haven't done anything with the sound uh, in post. So there's no EQ, there's no compression, there's no reverb. You're literally hearing at home as close to what we can give you as what we're hearing right here in the room. So here we go.
GX2 is five foot 11, so we really think of this as being a six foot piano uh, class. Uh, it's just under what most uh, pianos that actually list themselves as six feet is actually a very, very similar size. Um, and I hope you can hear at home, uh, this is a very warm piano. It's a very rich piano. Um, and uh, what's nice about uh, this instrument for its price point um, is that as you hear that sound uh, really start to get out of the instrument It's such a colorful, rich, lush tone, and unlike some of the previous Kawai models where you had a lot of upper partials and a very strong fundamental, some of those warmer mid-tones um, maybe didn't come out as strongly and you sort of got this kind of compressed sound, almost like a, you know, a CD versus a vinyl tone. Um, and so it was warm, but some people heard it as a, as a harsh sound. Uh, the GX has a beautiful uh, tonal curve to it. Uh, you've got nice, lush uh, mid partials, the upper partials. It's all very well balanced. And the other great thing is there's very little uh, mechanical inertia uh, in the sound. So in other words, very responsive. The instrument comes alive um, even at very, very low um, uh, dynamic ranges. Yeah, comes alive, very low dynamic ranges. Um, but yet you can uh, really draw out uh, a sharper attack when you need to. It's no surprise then that this instrument is finding a huge audience with the institutional market as well as the home market where you've got a really um, exceptional, exciting young player uh, who's trying to develop their, their craft. Because what do we look for in an instrument when we're at that stage in life? Well, we're looking for versatility, we're looking for consistency, we're looking for dynamicism, uh, an instrument that is really gonna give us the widest palette possible so we can figure out how to use all of those colors. That's what pushes us as players, as artists uh, to get better um, is to be given more tools and figure out how to use them. And so, yes, you can definitely achieve that at $100,000. You can most certainly achieve that if you look hard at the $50,000. When you get down into the $30,000 range, that becomes slim pickings to really have an instrument that you can truly describe as giving you a concert level palette to play with um, and, and not break the bank. And so I think that's where the GX series has really stepped up to the plate and helped bridge the divide between what normally would be an exceptionally well-built mass-produced piano, which I would describe the RX or uh, the Yamaha C-Series as this workhorse instrument that didn't require a lot of maintenance, lasts decades and decades, and produces a consistent tone. Um, but there's a gap between that and what used to be um, having to double your budget to get into something that really truly gave you that lush palette that you'd normally associate um, with a concert instrument. So it kind of sits as a, a nice halfway point. Now, I did mention that we were going to talk about the action, and so we are definitely going to pull out, and on the GX, they're using the Millennium 3 Action, the Ninja Edition. Now, this is a slight update to the Millennium 3 Action that they've had out for quite a few years. Uh, and, of course, the notable features that they have on the GX is we've got this extended uh, key length. And this is something that they've brought out on the GL. They've brought it out on some of the K-series, uh, the GX and the SK. And that is this extra long key stick that they're putting on there uh, to better simulate the type of um, 
uh, dynamic feel that you'd get on a concert instrument or at least a seven foot instrument. So that's kind of nice because it's reducing the transitional effect that you have if this is your practice instrument and you wind up having to do recitals on a nine foot or in a studio on a seven foot. This doesn't feel worlds apart, which is kind of a nice thing. Now, several other aspects of what they've got going on in this action make it a very fluid action, make it a very consistent action. Um, it's going to feel slightly deeper than what you'd normally get on a European action. Um, and that, uh, it, for many people, what that does is it sort of increases the level of control they have, particularly in the lower dynamic ranges. Uh, a lot of the rest of this action um, is designed around consistency and designed around maintenance. Um, and of course, Kauai is rather uh, famously or infamously uh, switched from wood components to uh, composite components for a lot of the mechanical parts. Of course, we all know for anyone who's been in the industry that Kauai took a lot of flack uh, for taking this step. Um, it sort of made it an easy punching bag for a lot of companies to come in and say, oh, it's plastic, it's made of recycled garbage bags. And I have heard uh, a multitude of very interesting things said about this composite action. Unfortunately, uh, the proof of the matter is that this, is, this has been shown to be an incredibly easy to own, consistent action, uh, and one where I think a lot of people uh, have appreciated the fact that you're having to regulate it less, uh, and especially in a climate like this, the piano plays the same on a hot, sweaty day as it does on a cold, dry day. Um, and that's, it's just a nice convenience, a nice musical convenience to have your piano feel the same regardless of what's going on with the weather. So we've got double felting, we've got a mahogany core hammer, um, we've got uh, the uh, mechanics in the repetition section of the action, which is made of the composite, so it's feeling consistent uh, day in, day out. We've got the extended key stick, and of course, Kawhi does a number of other things in its key bed uh, to really reinforce uh, the key uh, and make sure that you've got maximum energy flowing through the action and finally reaching uh, the string. So you're going to feel a lot of similarities between the Shigeru action and the GX. In fact, I would say probably the biggest difference between them is really the number of hours they're spending at the factory, um, refining it, you know, adding tiny little weights here and there, sanding this and that down. Um, but the raw ingredient is essentially the same. Now, the other thing which is contributing uh, to the GX's tone is the fact that we've got a vertically laminated bridge. Uh, that vertically laminated bridge is something that you find on pianos like a Steinway. You find it on uh, C. Beckstein's. Fazioli has a really uh, beautifully complex bridge. And the whole idea there is that you're trying to take all of the partials that are flowing through the string and get them down onto that soundboard. And of course, one type of wood is never going to deliver the full spectrum of tone without biasing it in some way. So you've got multiple laminations on the bridge delivering uh, different parts of the tone to the soundboard. You've got a tapered soundboard on this, which again is a premium feature that you often find on concert instruments, but it's a little less usual in this price range. Uh, and you've got a hard rock maple uh, combined with a mahogany uh, inner rim which of course is delivering a lot of uh, projection, a lot of rigidity, a lot of nice mid-tone projection, but that mahogany warms it up a little bit. Um, and so you get a very interesting mix of, of both this lower bloom to the tone, but you've also got this nice mid-range kind of laser beam thing that a lot of people would normally associate with say a Steinway. So the GX presents a really interesting uh, option, I think, for parents looking for uh, advanced students at home or, of course, schools looking for an easy to maintain but highly versatile instrument. Now, its main competitor, of course, is the Yamaha C2X. So I did say at the beginning of the video that we were going to be comparing the GX2 to the Yamaha C2X, and we've got a Yamaha C2X, a relatively new one, I think 6 million serial number, 
in the showroom and we're going to be just taking a look at exactly what the Yamaha brings to the table. It's another formidable instrument uh, and exactly how it compares to the G GX2. Um, I'm sorry to disappoint, this video will not be delivering a conclusive one is better than the other type of statement. Really the hope here is to draw your uh, attention to the comparison points so that you can continue to do some research and draw of course your own conclusions. Musical instruments and pianos are no exception are so personal and so there's no way uh, that I'm going to be able to predict what tone or what touch might appeal to you the best um, but like I said hopefully we can help direct your research so that you can uh, focus in on those salient points um, and maybe just make the shopping experience a little less uh, confusing or just a little more focused. So we're going to get set up in front of the C2X and see just how these two pianos stack up. Mm -hmm. 